Are you in the market for a GTX 1080 or a GTX 1070? Or you're possibly waiting for an RTX 2070 to magically drop down from the heavens? Yusuf, that's your cue to drop a RTX 2070 out of frame so it looks like it's dropping down out from the heavens? Sure! So the RTX 2070 is finally released into the wild and it's actually the first RTX card that I like in terms of dare I say it, value for money. When we look at what you can buy one for at the moment, you can get one for currently 530 US dollars or in Australia 830 AUD. And at this price point, it does post some decent figures. I'll pull up some synthetics for you guys at the moment so you can see how it performs against the other cards in the stacks that you may be thinking of purchasing in terms of value for money. You can see here it's beating out a 1080 comfortably. It's also beating out the 1070 by a long shot. However, it does of course still fall behind the GTX 1080 Ti. Now this card itself, the Gigabyte RTX 2070 OC edition, I did manage to overclock this thing about 80 megahertz on the core and about 400 megahertz on the memory. This did translate into gains, not just in the synthetics, but also in the games too, but it does come at a cost of increased power consumption. And the next synthetic we're gonna pull up for you guys is Time Spy Extreme. Here the RTX 2000 series cards do pull ahead of the GTX 10 series cards, especially in relation to the Fire Strike scores and the overclocks do give the GTX 2070 a bit more of an advantage. And of course, when you overclock the 20 series cards, you do gain more performance. But if you do overclock the GTX 10 series cards as well, then you will gain performance on those cards. But of course, when it comes to overclocking, your mileage may vary. But with that aside, let's take a look at some gaming benchmarks and then get on with the conclusion with the RTX 2070. Welcome back to Tech Yesterday. On this test bench here today, we're using a 7820X clock to 4.5 gigahertz, coupled with 3200 megahertz CL14 timings memory. And the first few benchmarks I'm gonna pull up for you guys is Destiny 2 at 1080p. And what we can see in this benchmark is the RTX 2070 is comfortably pulling ahead of the GTX 1080 and also the GTX 1070, but still falling behind the 1080 Ti. 1080p is a little bit more CPU bound, and I decided to test 1080p and also 1440p ultra settings because I believe this is where the 2070 sweet spot is going to lie. But looking over the 1440p numbers, they do see a little bit of an advantage to the 1080 Ti in relation to the 2070. Of course, the 2070 is still powering along compared to those other 10 series non-Ti variants. And then moving on to the next title, Crisis 3. Of course, even in 2018, there's still that question that goes around, can it run Crisis? And in this particular game at 1080p and 1440p in particular, at max settings, that's very high on all the dials. Yes, it can, and it did so very well. I'm surprised to see the 2000 series cards doing a little bit better in relation to the other games when we look at the numbers, we can see here it's comfortably pulling ahead of the GTX 1080 and also the GTX 1070, still falling behind the 1080 Ti, of course, but still starting to weigh up in terms of the 2070 being the, at least so far, the king of the 2000 series lineup, at least in terms of value for money. But pulling up some further numbers for you guys, Far Cry 5 here at 1080p, we're actually CPU bound a lot of the time, so the results didn't vary a whole lot. And then we move up to 1440p, we then see the 1080 Ti start to pull ahead of the 2070, and also the 2070 gaining a comfortable lead yet again over those 10 series cards. Next up here, we got Players Unknown's Battlegrounds, a game that is on its way out, I believe. And at 1080p, the RTX 2070 and also the 1080 and 1080 Ti are near maxing out because of the CPU. So the CPU is the limiting factor again at 1080p here. Uh, the GTX 1070 was falling a little bit behind. Uh, moving up to 1440p though, we then start to see a difference between these three cards, but it was surprising to see that the 2070 was a lot closer to the 1080 Ti than it was to the GTX 1080. And I believe this has to do with some kind of optimizations that are happening for the RTX 2000 series cards in relation to PUBG, I'm not quite sure. If I pull up some numbers from a previous review, we can see that the 2080 as well was comfortably beating the 1080 Ti in this particular game. And I've also updated to the latest drivers. So the 2000 series has had a little bit of time to mature since the last time I reviewed the 2080. However, if you like World of Warcraft, then the bad news is this game does need very high single core performance. And we're showing here that I have to literally max this game out with a 200 render resolution scale just to get the graphics cards to be stressed near 100%. And even here, we are hitting a few CPU limitations. I believe uh, going even higher may stress these cards more. 
But again, here we're getting over 40 FPS with the 1080 Ti. And even if we drop it down to 1440p, we're still getting around these numbers because the game starts to be CPU bound. But we can see the 2070 is still pulling ahead of the 1080 and 1070 in this particular benchmark. The 1% lows are showing this as well. And then moving across to SCUM, we're testing here at high settings. This actually performed pretty well in this benchmark, pulling ahead of the 1080 and also the 1070, but still falling behind the 1080 Ti. I actually couldn't test 1440p for some reason, because uh, I was testing on a 1080p monitor and to get the 1440p numbers, I was using the Nvidia DSR settings, which does enable a higher resolution. But in this case, it didn't work properly in the, only this particular game. I didn't really understand what was going on there. Maybe it's a bug, who knows? And then the last of the gaming benchmarks is the Final Fantasy XV demo. You've got this in two flavors. You can either set it in the default mode with no DLSS enabled, or also set it with DLSS enabled. And what we saw here on the normal mode, uh, the RTX 2070 was pulling ahead of the 1080 and also the 1070, but it's still falling behind the 1080 Ti by quite a bit. When we enable DLSS mode, the RTX 2070 uh, does pull ahead, but it does so at the expense, in my opinion, of this game looking a little bit worse than the normal benchmark that we're used to. So uh, DLSS is a feature that is promised on the RTX 2000 series cards, as well as ray tracing. But as I've said in the previous 2000 series cards reviews that I've done, we're yet to see these properly implemented in any game. And on top of that, is that game going to be enjoyable and is it going to be mass adopted and not some show pony game like Ashes of the Singularity? Now moving on with some other numbers in particular for this card, the power consumption with the RTX 2070, I'd imagine would be normally a little bit lower than this, but because the Gigabyte model is overclocked out of the factory, it was pulling numbers that are higher than the 1080 and also the 1070. And when we overclocked it, we again increased power consumption by a little bit too. This was power that was derived from the wall and that's where we measured it in all four cases here. Moving over to the thermals, the noise, and also the temperatures. Gigabyte's cooling solution right here is a dual slot cooler this time around. If we compare it to their 2080 Ti, for example, or even their 2080, they use what's a two and a half slot cooler on those models. So it is thicker and it does weigh more than the 2070. 2070 coming in around 850 grams, as opposed to the 2080 Ti and the 2080, which come in over one kilogram. Uh, but nonetheless, it does use less power and it doesn't need such a big cooling solution. It's got 382 mil fans, which do an absolutely fine job of cooling this thing and keeping the noise low. So we can see here, we've got 100%, 80%, 60%, and also the auto fan speeds, which were a little bit higher, I must admit, than the 2080 when I did that review. But the noise was very well under control. I'd say 60% on the fan speeds is the sweet spot for this card, which kept the temperatures very low at a comfortable 66 degrees, which for me personally, I do like keeping my graphics card under 70 degrees. So this cooler is definitely capable of giving you quiet noise as well as giving you low temperatures. And of course, decent overclocks as we talked about before. But also with this card in particular, we've got an RGB logo on the side here that lights up with the Gigabyte logo. You can change this via software if you wish to. On the rear of the card, you've also got three display ports and one HDMI, and you've also got USB Type-C if you wish to use that in conjunction with other devices or VR, for example. So there it all is, ladies and gentlemen, for the RTX 2000 series cards from Gigabyte. These are a gunmetal gray and black aesthetic. It does look, in my opinion, a lot better than their 10 series counterparts for the same Gigabyte models. They are including as well a four year warranty on these cards, at least in Australia. Very aggressive, very good if you're looking for something that you can put in your computer, set and forget and have peace of mind, knowing that it's gonna last you a long time. And of course, what about the RTX 2070 when we compare it versus the GTX 1080 and also the GTX 1070 and even the 1080 Ti in terms of value for money? There's a reason why I put these three 10 series cards in this graph, because I believe they are the closest competitors to the 2070 and what we saw here was pretty good value for money coming out of this card it's also got those new features if they uh, do get implemented and how and when they do get implemented i have no idea just yet because what we're kind of seeing is just demos and promises at the moment but they do have the ray tracing cores on board they do have the support for dlss which i'm sure when it's released it will be pretty good and you will be able to benefit from the value that the 2070 brings at least we've been waiting two years for it, so it's not impressive by any means, but it still is better, I feel, than a 1080 at street retail price, 
and even a 1070. So it is coming in at a decent price point, especially when we look at the 2080, which is nearly $300 more and it's not giving you a whole lot more performance. But at the same time, you still get those new ray tracing features. And as we said before, DLSS support. So it's good to see that there is kind of a value oriented option for the RTX 2000 series cards out there. If you're looking to upgrade to this series, then this is a decent choice. And that's about it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comment section below what you think about the RTX 2070. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you on another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.